This video introduces a MATLAB GUI which looks at a heat exchanger with disturbances. The aim here is to show that uncertainty has a significant impact on the behaviour of real systems. And simple strategies such as open loop control or manual control are often ineffective, that's the key word, they're ineffective at managing uncertainty. And only when an automatic feedback controller is introduced does the behaviour return to something acceptable. So you can look like this GUI more as a motivational tool and also to help students to understand key concepts. So we're going to use a heat exchanger. Now we're not going to go through the heat exchanger in detail in this particular video because it's been done elsewhere. So what you'll notice is fluid enters at one end and that's cold fluid with an entry temperature T in and it leaves at the other end as hot li liquid with a temperature T. And our objective is to get the exit temperature at the desired value. Now here we're going to assume that the heat coming from the heater is supplied by condensing steam. Now this is covered in the chapter on linear models and the section first order modelling. So if you look in that particular section you'll see number 11 here heat exchanger so you can go through the modelling in detail if you want to know. And this is a summary of the model. Again we're not going to derive it here and you can pause the video if you want to look at the key definitions. So what we're going to do here is focus on adding uncertainty. In practice the temperature of the inlet flow will vary due to upstream effects, effects that you can't necessarily control. And so what you'll have is the actual inlet flow temperature, Ti, will not be what you expect. So I've put Ti expected. It'll be something different because there's a small perturbation, which here I've called Ti perturbed. Now, in fact, in the GUI, the two values you will see are Ti, the actual inlet, and Ti expected, what you think it should be. In a similar way, the fluid flow rate through the um, heat exchanger may be slightly different from what you expect. So we'll use the same sort of notation. We'll say you've got the actual flow rate, F, will differ from the expected flow rate by some small perturbation value. Now, obviously, there are many other sources of uncertainty in a heat exchanger, but we're just going to introduce two here because we're trying to illustrate concepts and get students to understand the impact of uncertainty. Now to run the GUI, it's fairly simple. Make sure you've got the P code file and the FIG file, which you can get from the website, and type the file name in the relevant folder to run. So you'll see here, my folder is heat exchanger with disturbance, and the file name is heat exchanger dist. So you just type that name in the command window and the GUI will run. So this is what the GUI looks like. Now I'll just show you the key values before we actually run it so you can see what's happening. So if you look at these top two values here, they correspond to the expected value of the inlet temperature. So that's the top one. And then the actual value of the inlet temperature, that's the bottom one. So you can see the difference. You can set the tank volume, that will change the system dynamics. And again, if you look at the fluid flow rate, you can see there's an expected value given in that one there. And there's the actual fluid flow rate is given in that box there. So you can see where there's a difference. And the steam flow, you can set it manually, and that value will go there. But the actual value, if you're using closed loop control, will be there and it will be slightly different. So if you open loop, the manual value will be what you get. If you're closed loop, then obviously it will ignore the manual value and it will give you the closed loop value. Now in terms of plots, you'll see the disturbances to flow are marked with this green line and you'll see the key thing is magnified 200 so that you can see what's going on. And similarly, the red line gives you the disturbances in the inlet flow. Now, those two lines are not centered about the origin. They're not centered about zero. They're centered about some other value, probably around 10, just so you can see what's happening. And the key thing is you'll notice they go up and down. And what you can do down here is you can choose to have an inlet temperature disturbance on or off. You, so you can have no disturbances or have disturbances and similar with the flow rate. And the final tab down here allows you to choose manual control 
or feedback control. Now, let's give you a challenge. Can you maintain the desired outlet temperature by manually selecting the flow of steam? So it's depend it's, pretend it's a human who's trying to control the outlet temperature, a bit like you in a shower. Can you manually change the lever in order to get the desired outlet? And the key thing here is the GUI is going to randomly vary the perturbations on the inlet temperature and the inlet flow. So your challenge is, can you do this while you've got random variations in the inlet flow? So in manual mode, you've got two alternatives. You can set a fixed value of Q and see, does it work? And that's probably what you would do in a shower normally. You'd set the knobs at the, and just hope it works. Or you can con try to keep changing Q and can you still get effective control? And that's basically saying, can open loop control, and even a little bit of closed loop but manual control, give you what you want. And the second challenge is to say, OK, now let's put it in feedback mode and see how effective is this. Now, to save you the effort, we've tuned the PI for you, and the PI design is done using this design in here. You'll see simple feedback for. So you can look it up if you want to see the feedback design we're using. So let's go to the GUI then. <coughs> So there it is. So here's the GUI. So the first thing I'm going to do, you'll see, it's got lots of default values, and we'll just start it running. Now you can see at the moment, um, it's just got a simple step response because we started from a cold temperature. But now you'll notice the green and the red lines changing. So those are the inlet temperature perturbations and the fluid flow perturbations. And if you look up here, you'll see there's some values are different and those are telling you the difference between the expected and the actual value so that's linked to these green and red curves and you'll see every time the inlet temperature changes or the flow rate changes the outlet temperature changes and so if we're running just open loop with a fixed Q what's the chances that you can maintain a constant temperature and you'll see of course you can't it just keeps changing and there's nothing you can do so let's try manual mode then. So manual mode, I can take this slider and I can manually change Q. So I want to get a temperature of 30 degrees. So can I move this slider to maintain a temperature of 30 degrees? Oh, and you'll see it's actually quite difficult. So I'm trying to do it manually. I'm, maybe I'm not doing too bad a job. But you'll see as I move this slider up and down, can I keep the temperature at 30 degrees as the perturbations keep changing and you'll see well just about but it's not very good control is it and this is one of the problems with humans you can just about manage it but if I had to do this all day by the end of the day my control is going to be very poor because I'll lose concentration and so on so manual mode just about but not very clean so now what we can do is switch it to something like proportional I won't bother with that because that's covered elsewhere and I'll just go straight to PI. Now, you're going to get some sort of bump here because the PI hasn't been tuned. And so you have, I haven't put bump plus transfer in here. But once you get over the transients, you can see now the PI is controlling you to 30 degrees as requested. And you'll notice that when the perturbations happen, when the inlet temperature and the flow change, obviously you'll get a transient bump. But the PI is bringing you back effectively and smoothly. And it's going to keep doing that all day. It's not going to get tired. Whereas if you had to do this manually, you're going to struggle. So there you go. So let's pause that and exit. And we'll go back here. Right. So also note here, you can switch off the disturbances so you can look at the impact of one disturbance at a time if you want to. So in conclusions, students should understand the impact of uncertainty on system behaviour and recognise that in general, manual or open loop control are often ineffective at dealing with disturbances and hence result in poor control. And automatic feedback is a cheap and effective solution, but of course it relies on the feedback design being done well.